Hi, welcome back to another video and this time I'm going to talk to you all about the Serpent Collection from the house of Stefan Humbert Lucas or Luca. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Everyone's having their best attempt at it and this is mine. Let's just call him SHL from now on. And this is a collection that started off maybe about seven or eight years ago now with the first one that was released in this collection which was called Mortal Skin and it's now grown to be a full collection and there's nine of them now and there's two Harrods exclusives there's one called H Mamba and there's another one called Ruby Naga and there's another one that was released just recently here in 2022 called Pink Boa I don't have those with me, but I do have the the main six that aren't sort of exclusives or have been just recently released. So this sampler pack was kindly sent to me by a, a friend of mine so that I could have a chance to smell them and review them. So I feel kind of lucky and and here I go uh, in reviewing them. And before I start, I'm just gonna show you what they look like. They look just kind of like this here in their little boxes and the big one here as well, which I will mention quite soon. So the one I wanna start off with right now is called Mortal Skin. And the actual sampler kind of looks like this, but I will show you a picture of the bottle and the bottles are kind of cool looking. They all sort of colored themes on the main design of the uh, SHL 777 collection, which I actually have a few bottles of as well and I have reviewed previously. This one is Mortal Skin and I'm gonna just have a quick reminder of what it smells like. Yeah, this was really nice. Very nice atomizers on these actually. Ah, oh, so good, so, so good. Now, this I think is the best of the line. It's, it's smooth ink and blackberry and that's quite niche if you ask me and i do like ink as a niche perfume uh, as a niche ingredient or a niche note in perfumery however whenever i've smelt it it's done quite rough like like rough like as in ink on paper but this one is smooth it's really really smooth it's almost like those fragrant pens that you used to get when you were a kid you know the only downside for me anyway is the poor longevity that i get i have worn this a fair few times actually i think it's the one that i've worn the most out of the entire lineup that i've received so far and it is my favorite and it is the one that i think is full bottle worthy but the longevity mm, i'd really love to say that it was good but it's not that great but then again it just might be my sample over here but yeah as i said it's full bottle worthy for me i have nothing like this in my collection it is quite fruity but it still sort of stays dark and niche enough for me to enjoy because of that ink that it's paired with and of course all the resins that are in there to anchor it down so it really does suit my taste the next one is venom incarnate and it looks like this i mean the sample looks like this but the box itself or the bottle itself will look something like this whatever i put on the screen now this is a wild strawberry with some cinnamon as a backbone it's quite playful actually and there's really nothing venomous in here nothing sharp and nothing sort of protruding its way out to sort of try and sting you it's actually kind of smooth it's it's a bit the spiciness of it makes the strawberry a little bit rough that's the image that i get from the actual smell and to me anyway it has a slight resemblance to bodicia the victorious's amethyst but it's severely lacking in backbone to make it interesting but if you do like a thorny and spicy strawberry then this one is for you venom incarnate now before i go on i have to say that these are all quite synthetic smelling beauties that's right that's what i said they're synthetic but they're still beautiful shl has a way of taking stuff that doesn't smell so very natural and making it smell beautiful and interesting and Niche, it is the embodiment of niche, really it is. And as as unnatural as they are, they're still very pleasant in their aroma. So I have to say that. Which leads me on to my next one, which actually doesn't lead me on to my next one, but 
Anyway, let's pretend that it leads me on to my next one, which is this one. It's called Crying of Evil. And I have no idea where all these names came from. Maybe something to do with serpents and the imagery of serpents and snakes and things like that. It is the serpent collection after all. This is a churchy and fruity kind of leather. This one is the cult classic. It's kind of spicy up close, but I can pick up a tartness in that spice as well. In the sillage is more of leather and red berries of the non-edible variety, but smoky and spicy in the background. This is a niche scent for for sure. And whilst it's not my favorite, I'm sure the leather lovers out there would absolutely fall in love with this one. Crying of Evil. Next one up is a Lady White Snake, which is a floral with a strong leather note in it. And whilst I find it a little bit meh, I'm told that this is a sleeper. I still don't believe it though. It's supposed to be kind of like this boss bitch kind of smell, but it's totally not. It's actually more like the chick who thinks she's the boss because she's claimed some senior position in some corporation, working overtime for free for the real boss who's not a bitch. And the second last one on this list is Sand Dance. Sand Dance. I do like this one quite a lot. This is a grown up gourmand for men. Close up, you get the whiskey note and it's actually quite realistic. It's whiskey that's been aged in an oak barrel, specifically American oak because of the high levels of vanillins that you get in American oak. It's so nice. In the sillage you get this cacao and the resins and I think in cold weather that this would go perfectly with a thin woolen turtleneck matched with a tweed blazer perched atop a Chesterfield armchair in a room with no lights except a, a roaring fire snifter of brandy in hand, intently and intensely watching the flames dance, pondering the reasons for the dance, is that fire became conscious of itself and burned itself constantly, writhing in agony as it tried to get away from itself before it died a painful, lengthy death. Speaking of fire, the next one is called God of Fire. This one is going to be the big seller, the summer banger. Every girl who has actually smelled this has wanted to buy a bottle and buying a bottle of this or any of this uh, SHL sort of serpent collection in the country that I'm in, in Australia, is a very difficult thing to achieve because it's not readily available. So having this sample set is a very luxurious thing to have at this point in time. But this one right here, many people will go on and on. And this one's a little bit different because all of them come in like this two milliliter sort of samples in their little boxes. Uh, but this one actually comes in a seven mil package like this and it pops out and I'll show you because this was this bottle was actually quite full but it is no longer as full as it used to be because I have worn it quite a bit. Mm, my god all right where do I start with this? Like I said, every girl who smelled this wanted a bottle of it. And yes, dudes can wear it too, because I'm a dude and I'm wearing it as well. All right. Yes, it's got mango in there. It's sweeter than what I would usually go for. But that mango and its sweetness is tempered by the zest of this ginger and the tartness of lemon and red berries. And those red berries have to be cranberries because they're so tart and they sort of just cut through the sweetness of the mango. And when the mango dies, it gets even better because the tartness plays with the sweetness so very well and you catch wafts of it in the sillage for quite a long time as a matter of fact. So it's certainly no slouch in performance. In the base it's got the things that usually make fragrances sort of really quite pungent. It's got cypriol oil and what's the other one that it's got? It's got cypriol oil and it's got oud and those are quite pungent but they're very, very light-handed in the base of this particular fragrance, so they haven't ruined it. But you can still smell them, and they're just enough to provide a girthy backbone for the zesty, fruity tartness to rest on. All I can envisage when I smell this is daytime beach vibes, beats, colorful cocktails. It's just got fun in the sun written all over it, except for maybe the name. 
God of Fire. It's got nothing to do with fire. It's not even spicy or anything like that. So I have no idea. Like I said, the names make no sense whatsoever. I think they're just there to adhere to the Serpent collection, except for Mortal Skin. Maybe that's the only one because that's the first one. However, God of Fire, a lot of, some people are sort of comparing it to Baccarat Rouge 540. It does not smell like that at all because if it did, then I wouldn't like it. But I do really, really like this one. And if I would if I could, as a matter of fact, because, you know, it's near impossible to get bottles of these. If I could buy bottles and spend my money on bottles, because these are these SHLs are never cheap. They're never cheap. OK, if I could, then it would be Mortal Skin and it would be God of Fire. Those are my picks. And if I was way, 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 if I got a really good deal, I would also grab sand dance as well because I, I i did like that one even though i'm really not into gourmands all that much well there you go that was it that's the six that i've got from the serpent collection from shl stefan humbert lucas lucas humber luca i just SHL and uh, there you go so that's the that's the serpent collection most of these came out this year or the year before or quite quite recent quite new as a matter of fact except for mortal skin which I think came out back in 2014 or something like that which started off the collection and hopefully they get their distribution sorted out and we can all enjoy them and I think the reason why God of Fire hasn't really blown up like crazy yet is because you just can't find bottles of it anywhere so once that gets sorted out and I'm pretty sure when summertime rolls around in the Northern Hemisphere, this is going to absolutely go gangbusters and you're gonna be smelling it everywhere. That's my take on it anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, thanks for watching.